Hello and welcome to the last instalment of the Ride Around Goulburn on the Spider and I thought instead of talking about the scenery and other things that I've talked about in the past I would talk about five things that I like about the Spider. I've got about 11 minutes to do that in so I'd better get on and do it without causing any, wasting any time. So the first thing I like about it, and these are not in order of the best to the least, you know, number one isn't the best and number five isn't the uh, worst or whatever. They're just five things that I like about the Spider. So the first one is the three wheels and stability. Now I, as you may recall, had a Vulcan Voyager Kawasaki 1700 and I sold that to my son. And the reason I did that is I felt that the bike was getting too big and too heavy for me. Uh, obviously its dimensions hadn't changed or size or anything like that, but just the way I'm getting on, getting on, and it's, bit, it's getting a bit hard to manoeuvre it around town. Out on the open road, not a problem, but getting around town, around roundabouts and so on, I thought it's getting a bit big and a bit heavy. Uh, circumstances came that my son had to uh, had his bike written off, so I sold him my one, and I decided that the three wheels was the way to go because it had the stability that I wanted of a third wheel, and I wasn't having to balance a big bike at a roundabout or a giveaway sign or a thing like that. And it also had the size so that I wasn't going to experience that sorry I didn't see you mate syndrome that's often a problem with motorcyclists. Sid Sim as a bloke I know calls it. It's a big thing. It's not loud but it's big so it's hard to miss. So um, I hope that the combination of those two things, the size of it uh, and the stability of it will be the um, features that I wanted in it and it'll make uh, motorists on the road take notice of it. The second thing I like about it is to do with the um, transmission. Uh, my Vulcan had a six-speed heel and toe, toe shifter and the Suzuki Bergman scooter that I have has a CVT or constant variable transmission but it also has a manual override so you can select the sixth gear for the highway uh, and get better fuel economy. This one has the semi-automatic uh, thumb and finger shifter as I said in the last video, I find it's better to close off the throttle like you do in a manual to change up. Uh, and when you touch the brake, it changes down by itself. I like that idea. It's a sort of semi-automatic, like you're getting your car, you put the car in drive and away it goes. When I'm out on the road, I don't want to be uh, trying to balance the gears, working my foot, working the clutch, working the brake, all these sort of things. I just want to get in my car and drive and when I get, him, get on my bike now I want to get out and enjoy the scenery like I am doing in this ride and uh, I want as many things that can take care of themselves to take care of themselves. Now I saw another guy talking about one of the things he didn't like the about the F3 was that when they upgraded the engines to the 1330 they did away with the manual transmission. I suppose the argument was well that's one less production cost we have to make two different gearboxes we'll just make one gearbox and hopefully everybody will like it. I understand that some riders like the control of the clutch and up and down shifter on their foot but you have that effect if you need it in that you can manually with your forefinger change down or you can let the bike do it for you so um, you still have that manual control but it's as they say semi-automatic. The other thing I like about the transmission is the fact that it includes reverse. Uh, looking at the manual today and seeing that this thing is rated at 427 kilos dry. It takes 25 litres of fuel, so that's another 25 kilos. It takes a couple of litres of uh, engine oil, a couple of litres of coolant, and then in, uh, brake fluid and so on. So you're looking at probably 450 kilos when it's wet and ready to go. And then, even with my weight, which is under 80 kilos, you're well over the 500 kilos when you're uh, trying to get this thing moving. Now, in the town where I live, Goulburn in New South Wales in Australia, we have nose-in angle parking, so your nose has to be to the curb. Now, it's pretty easy to just roll your bike into the cur into the uh, guttering or into the parking space just using the camber of the road, but getting it out when it's a big heavy bike is impossible. There's no way you can duck walk a 400 kilo bike out, and there's no way that I could anyway walk this thing out. I could always try and just revol uh, roll it in backwards, into the parking space and take the risk of being fined for not parking properly. I have to say that hasn't happened to me, but I don't often take, didn't often take my other bike down the street, and I usually walk down the street, so I didn't have that problem, and I don't want to find it out. But having the reverse makes it easier to manoeuvre when I want to get into my yard, and you'll see that at the end of this video, and also makes it easy to manoeuvre when you want to get in and out of parking spaces in shopping malls and things like that. The next thing I like about it is the brake setup. Um, 
Most motorcycles have a handbrake on the right hand uh, handlebar and a foot brake on the right where the right foot would go. My scooter has a right and uh, has a front and back brake and both levers on the handlebars. So there's a bit of change getting used to hopping on the spider and just looking at where your right foot would be, where your right foot's on the peg and right in front of that is the brake pedal. And the brake pedal operates all three brakes, that is the two front discs and the rear disc and it uses ABS and EBD as I explained in a previous video. Now to me, again that's a good thing, I can just get on the bike and when I want to slow down I just touch one brake and the computers and electronics in the system work out well how much force do I need for each one, how much braking do I need for each one and it does the job it's supposed to do and I like that. I did hear somebody talking about the need for these machines to have a what they called a handbrake, what we call, we would call, in Australia we call the parking brake a handbrake because you use your hand to operate in your car, uh, but what this person meant was a brake lever on the right hand handlebar and the reason that they said this was because if you are a person who has a disability in your right foot, for example, a weakness of some sort or a disability in your right foot, you can't ride these machines because you can't operate the brake pedal. Uh, now I did see one fellow who advertised one who uh, had modified it and had a handbrake fitted to it but I expect that would be a fairly expensive proposition so uh, the possibility of K&M providing a, a handbrake I don't know how, how whether, whether there is any likelihood of that but for me the one brake that controls everything or the one pedal that controls everything again it's like you come into a roundabout or you come into a giveaway sign or an intersection of some sort and you've got to work the clutch and work the transmission then you've got to work the front brake you've got to work the back brake and all that the less of that you have to do for me is I just get on I put my foot on the brake pedal bike slows down and uh, I've only got one thing to think about uh, the next thing I like about this bike is the screen. Uh, my Kawasaki had a very high fixed screen that I could look through. I know people talk about looking over them or looking uh, uh, through them and how sometimes they find that a bit weird. I never had a problem with that. The screen was high enough that I could look through it. There was no distortion through it. There was no crazing and cracking or anything like that. Uh, my Vulcan, uh, sorry, my Suzuki Bergman has an electrically adjustable screen that can be adjusted obviously while you're riding and so does this. Now the beauty of that is that when you're out on the highway and you're up at 110 which is the national speed limit in Australia you have the screen nice and high to keep the wind off you and stop that force of blowing you back on the towards the back seat and the pressure on your chest and your shoulders and so on. When you come into a town and you've got to slow down to 50 which is the um, speed limit in most built up areas in Australia, it's 50 kilometres, you want a bit more airflow or even if it's a warm day you don't necessarily want the screen all the way up you might want it a bit down so you get a bit of air around your face and so on so the electrically adjustable screen is a uh, is a great thing it's nice and wide and uh, gives you good protection there but also and you can see this in the video just as I'm saying it now down below the screen are some wind deflectors around where your hands would be so there's good uh, overall wind protection from winds coming directly towards you Obviously, you can't uh, have complete protection from winds that might from side winds, and because this bike has a uh, such a big high profile, it is a little bit subject to side wind buffeting. But I've heard of people saying you put a extra sway bar on the front, and that tends to stiffen it and alleviate that problem. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what I've heard. And the last thing, um, by no means the least, and I probably could think of five more, but the next most. Uh, thing I most like about this bike is the comfortable seat. My Kawasaki Voyager again had a very really comfortable seat for the passenger. You sat, you sat quite low down in that bike uh, and when you when I wore my chest camera you could only ever see the instruments. I haven't put the chest camera on this but your seating position is a little higher so I'd imagine that you get a better view if, you, if I had the chest camera on. But nevertheless, the seating position, the seat itself is wide and it's well padded and it's comfortable. And as I showed you in one an, an earlier video, I also sat in the pillion seat and it's quite comfortable. And there's a nice curved, um, well padded backrest that supports the pillion. And it has the speakers built into it. And there are good hand grips and there's heated grips for that, for the pillion. And there's also... Um, controls for the audio system for the pillion. Now I can't comment on how those things work because I've never been the pillion and I've never used them so I don't know if they're any good or not. 
Um, yesterday I turned on the uh, rider hand grips and in a few moments they were quite warm and I felt more than adequate and I felt even on probably on most winter days I probably would have them on the low setting. I generally wear two pairs of gloves, a sort of light inner woolen one and then a thicker leather one in winter but I probably would have it if I had it on the either setting it would be the low setting or I probably would turn it off. I'm just at my home here now and I'm uh, putting the bike in reverse gear and backing into my yard. Um, so hopefully you can uh, see how the reverse gearing works and how backing into the yard this way is so much easier than trying to duck walk it as I used to do with my uh, Kawasaki.